Blake Edwards on genetics. This is the County Fair Podcast, where fair influencers share their valuable insights, strengthening and growing the long-lived tradition of the County Fair. This episode is brought to you by ShowWorks. ShowWorks Fair Entry Software has set the gold standard for fairs across the United States and Canada for more than 20 years, serving more than 75% of the country's fairs. ShowWorks is a place to handle fair entries, billings, payouts, and the incorporation of virtual elements into your show and auction. Visit www.fairsoftware.com to learn more. Today's scripture is from Deuteronomy. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Deuteronomy 28.12 I'm Jeffrey Palermo, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Christina Rudolph, and excited today to introduce Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards is our guest, and um, I've known Blake for probably a little bit over 10 years now, and uh, he lives and breathes agriculture. He has had... Actually, Blake, share a little bit about your background. Sure. Yeah. Born and raised on a ranch, working ranch there in Hamilton, Texas. Uh, My grandparents, uh, you know, was where our influence was in the purebred beef master breed when I was a young man. And through that, uh, grew in agriculture. Uh, Dad and I, Brant, my, my younger brother, uh, you know, ran some commercial cattle, uh, went to Tarleton State University and, and got an ag education degree and, and taught ag for about 10 years. Uh, in that time, the livestock industry became a huge influence to me and, and a passion uh, that, that we share with a lot of people around that area. And, uh, you know, just have stayed in that, that world and, and have just been on a lot of different uh, sides of that, been the advisor, the, the county fair board leader, the swan superintendent at Hamilton County, uh, fitter, I guess is what is a term that people use. So I've, I've been on all sides of that, uh, you know, through the cattle industry and the, and the show pig industry mostly. Um, but yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great uh, industry for us to be in, grow up in, now raise my kids in. I've got a nephew that's 14 and he's been showing for me since he was five. And uh, I've stayed in agriculture, you know, even even after I quit teaching ag, I, I stayed in agriculture. I, I operate uh, Vision Dairy Services in Meridian, Texas, and we do really, really large manure handling systems for dairies and swine units. Um, we primarily focus on the dairy side. And uh, a matter of fact, we're actually headed back to Kansas next week to to start another one. So uh, we've got a lot of neat, neat things through Vision Dairy. It, again, the agriculture industry has been a passion of mine and um, it, it's, it's hopefully it's something that I'll get to continue to, to stay in and work through. I think one of the first things that uh, we got to work on were was the Area Go Texan Committee for yep. the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And um, when I was asking who who would like to join this committee, and the same as this podcast, uh, Blake Edwards ready to jump in. If we're going to be promoting, you know, promoting agriculture, promoting the youth, uh, you're you're always willing to jump in. Yep. That's awesome. So. That that was an awesome experience with uh, the Go Texan uh, committee. You know, Brant and I won that uh, washer tournament in Hamilton County and didn't really know what we had <laughs> were up or fixing to be up against. So we show up at the state washer tournament and the guys have like world champion washer buckles. <laughs> and we're like, oh my goodness, we're in so much trouble. And we actually took them to five games and almost beat them, but we didn't prevail that day. So the, the festivities started early for us, you know, so it was an awesome time though. Yes. That was, that was a good time. Way to represent. Way to represent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, what are some of your proudest accomplishments as a breeder? Uh, so you, I, I know that you, you don't just dabble. You are, you're an, a staple in the pig breeding. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got started and why, why you stick with it. Well, it's a, it's real simple. I got started because I was a young act teacher and the kids simply couldn't afford larger animal projects. So I had a conversation with my father. Uh, his, his name was Randy. And uh, we started a small sow herd in 2006. 
And it was primarily to help meet the needs for kids that couldn't afford a steer or, you know, the lamb and goat market was, was kind of wild at that mo moment in time. And it was, again, it was just a place where we could take the kids that if they had three to $500 and we could buy them show projects and be competitive. And, um, and, and that's, that's where it all started. Uh, dad and I basically started with like three sows and, uh, very quickly, you know, it, it, through our efforts and through winning and through promotion, it, it, it escalated pretty quick. Um, I currently own 65 ish sows with Brad Massey in Mineral Wells, Texas. So in 2013 or 14, I merged all my sows with Blazing Sevens Farms. Um, Gail and I were starting a family. I just didn't have the time commitment to, to do it like I was. And dad had passed away, um, you know, so that that had kind of, you know, changed the, the, the landscape some. And so, yeah, we've got about 65 sows. Um, we've stayed in it really basically it's not always a winning proposition on the on the money side you know we've stayed in it because we like to help kids we like to help people uh it's a passion for both brad and i and uh you know we want to help and and brad is he'll echo this he echoes it every day most you know every pretty much every day if a family comes to us and they need help and they want to show animals we'll find a way to help them and it's been an awesome industry for us to to be in Oh, I love that. I love that yep. you, you view it as a ministry and really, you know, you have a heart for getting those kids and families involved. And what does it, you know, why do you think it's so important for kids to, to get involved with a project like this? Gosh, there's, there's so many reasons and, and there's some buzzwords that, that people use. And I think, I think the most, and I think there's, there's a lot of things that are important um, through the, through the exhibition of livestock. Uh, I think one is responsibility, obviously to be able to, to go out day to day, twice a day, feed, manage, and care for an animal teaches a lot of things. And, and mo mostly it's responsibility and, and work ethic. Um, and I think the greatest thing that it allows us to do, and I think the young people that I've helped now that are in college or, or out of college, or maybe even some of the kids that are in high school that we've helped is just the relationships that, that you're able to build within the industry. Um, I'll give you a prime example. There's a gentleman that, that just is battling COVID very, very bad. He, he had a very, very bad case of it. Mm. Um, the industry came together. They did an online auction that we donated you know, items that we sell, we represent a company called Purple Pursuit Show Fees. And we generated $41,000 for his family. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it, it, it seems like every month, every two weeks, there's somebody that comes up that needs help. And the relationships that we've built in this industry have allowed us to, to do things like that, where we can hand those families a $40,000 check to, to help out, you know, in their time of need. So, for me, yes, yeah, it's great for those kids to learn responsibility and financial, you know, um, they have to, they have to be able to see the financial side of an animal. What does it cost for the animal to get bought? The feed cost, the entry cost, all those things are important. But I think one of the greatest things that it allows those young people to do is to build relationships that they can carry into their adulthood. And again, when there's people in need, um, it seems like the show industry always rises to the occasion and helps them. Awesome. That's really great. That's really special and really touching. If you have families or kids that are looking to even get started raising animals to show, what advice or guidance do you have them to get started? I tell people uh, when, when I have new families come to me, the very first thing that we try to do is incorporate an ag advisor or a 4-H leader into the system. I think it's so important for young people and parents as a whole to, to rely and use their advisors um, to, to the best that they can. Uh, there's some advisors that don't specialize in pigs or cattle or whatever it may be, but I think reaching out to them and, uh, and letting them know, Hey, this is what we're wanting to do and let them help you guide, guide that project or, or guide that, that idea is a, is a really big thing. Those, those people are educated to do so. 
they've, they've probably been around the livestock industry, you know, a long time as well. So we always try to incorporate an advisor to, to help um, on, on that, on that scale. So I, I think that's a really important uh, part. And, and gosh, I don't want to get off the subject too far, but you know, ag teaching is a hard, is a ag teaching is a hard career. I mean, I, I did it for 10 years and, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of things that, that, that you, you know, you don't get a, you don't get a thank you. You don't get a, Hey, you know, I appreciate your help. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a passion. Again, you, you do it because you want to, and you want to help kids. And, you know, I think most every ag teacher in the state of Texas or in the nation for that matter, will, will be glad to help you or help get you started or point you in the right direction of where you need to go. So I think it's a big, big deal for, for those ag advisors and those 4-H leaders to be involved. I think, you know, being an ag teacher is not a profession. It is definitely a calling. And so those individuals that are, yeah. that are they're there for the kids 24 seven to help them out, yeah. uh, transporting, I witnessing transporting, you know, kids to and from shows, uh, helping them, you know, with their feeding schedules, helping them mm-hmm. to educate them. Um, definitely not for the fair hearted. So, uh, yeah, yeah. we, we uh we grew up with a with a couple of them in Hamilton, you know Terry Bays and and Mr. Toby Long and gosh those guys would haul us back and forth to from event to track meet or event to baseball game or or whatever was needed at that time or they would coordinate all those things with us so that we could you know do multiple events in a day or two days or whatever it may be and and uh you know Mr. Long was a huge influence for me that's one of the reasons I went into ag education was because of Mr. Long. And, and so, you know, he's, he's very near and dear to my family's heart. And, and, uh, he, he's a, he was a huge influence in, in our lives. So. I noticed that you still get drawn to the livestock shows. Um, what, what are you doing when you're there now? What role do you play when you're showing up at shows? Yeah. So I, I, I now have a big, pretty big following. Uh, I'd say, you know, a fairly, a fairly large following. And, and so we will haul 40 to 60 animals into different shows at different times of the year, sometimes more, sometimes less. My role at this point is basically uh, an advi- as an advisor to different, different kids. You know, they've, they've, they've teamed up with us and, and they're showing our hogs or we've helped them buy hogs or whatever. And, and so at that point, when we get to a show, I'm, I'm helping make sure the animals, uh, looking as good as it can be, uh, we're fill, we have the right body fill, we have the right shape that we want to have and, uh, you know, getting those kids to the ring and, and getting them into the, to the show ring to, to be, you know, try to be as successful as we can. And, and, um, it's been, again, the last five years since my merger with Brad Massey at Blazing Sevens, I mean, We've had a heck of a run and it's been a lot of fun to, to do so. That's really cool. Yeah. When they're, before they even show up at the show, what kind of, uh, what kind of things do you advise those kids on and what they should be doing with their animals prior to getting there? Yeah. So I prom- I, I'm pretty much 99% of my dealing with the kids is in the show pig industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's daily care, daily routines, um, feeding and nutrition, all those things are, are done before the show. And I think if you'll, if you talk to anybody that's in a similar role that, that I'm in, they'll tell you that if you're not ready, when you get there, <laughs> it's probably not going to be a very good day for you. Yeah. So all those things have to happen prior to, I mean, months prior to a show. It's not, Hey, two weeks out, we're going to do this. Um, the day-to-day care management, uh, skin and hair routines, all those things come into play and, and allow you to be successful on show day. It, it's no different than taking a test at school. If you haven't studied, you're probably not going to have a very good test. <laughs> so, good advice. So very similar, <laughs> very similar concept. Yeah. Oh, really good advice. We, we help a lot with the nutrition side. You know, most all the kids know to do skin and hair. Most all the kids know that they've got to walk their pig uh, where we have been probably the most influential is on the nutrition side where we go in and help change feeds. And, and that's where we've probably been the most influential with, with the show teams. So when you talk about nutrition, is it, uh, does it vary based on the pig and what you're trying to get it to look like? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all, it's, uh, gosh, I mean, you can relate it to humans. You can relate it to really anything. I mean, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve, you change nutrition, you change fat content, glycine levels, you know, based on what, what appearance you're trying to obtain. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, sometimes it looks like we're mad scientists back mixing 16 different things to try (laughs) to accomplish this, but everything goes into those, those, uh, everything goes into those rations for a reason. You know, it's, it's, it's calculated, I guess, (laughs) is the right word. Yeah. Yeah. So we can do it such precisely with our livestock. Why is it so difficult to do it for us? It's, it's a quite a bit different mentality. The, the hogs don't have an option. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, the hogs don't, the pigs don't have an option. We do. Uh, I, I need to, I want to run down and get a candy bar from the store. I, you know, uh, that's not that doesn't go that doesn't go well with with my body shape. So that's right. Easter <laughs> but, candy didn't help, did it? No, no. But yeah, no. That's that's a good question. I mean, and and it's funny when you talk to people in uh, nutrition on the human side. It's it's so similar. I mean, the the pig, uh, you know, swine have a very very similar systems. Pretty much their whole system is very close to a human being. So there went my light. Do you see it? Christina, my light came I on. Did. Yes. Uh, I was having trouble with it. We, but yeah. We've been looking at Blake in the dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the reproduction, the the digestive system, everything on a on a on a pig is very very similar to that of a human. So yeah, you can use the same ideas. Again, it's calculated. How much do you want to put in? To how much do you want to get out? If a, if a family was looking at the cost of getting involved, um, what is the typical cost for someone to raise a pig and get it to show? And then what are they hoping for when they, they land at the fair? Well, that's a really good question. And we try to base our budgets on what the average of a county fair will pay. Uh, so we try to be, cal- again, it's very calculated, but um, you can expect on average, a show pig to cost, uh, I, I'm going to generalize this, uh, $500 to $750. You're going to probably spend that on feed and entries. So, you know, now you're at $1,000 to $1,500. Mm-hmm. And the goal is to try to, to, try to you know, make that, that amount back up at the, the premium sale or the sale that you have at your county fair. We're very lucky in Central Texas, a lot of our counties are in January. Mm-hmm. So we have the ability to show at a premium sale or show in January and then take those same hogs and show them at a state major, whether mm-hmm. it be Fort Worth, San Antonio, San Angelo, Houston, Austin. Uh, so we're able to double dip I, is kind of the, the, I guess is the buzzword there is to double dip those hogs. And hopefully you make the sale at your county, you take that hog on and you, you try to make the sale or sell your animal you know, at the next show. So, um, you know, there, it's, it's not a very lucrative business. Um, it, 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 if you're trying to get into the, the show pig industry as an exhibitor to make money, um, it's very hard. I mean, it's, it's not always, you're not always on the winning end at the end of the day on the, on the monetary side of things. Showworks Auction is taking junior livestock shows and sales by storm. As the leader in integrated live and online auctions, there's a viable solution to enhance every fair. Check out www.fairsoftware.com today. Do y'all ever, at at y'all show, do y'all do add-ons or anything to try and, you know, help kids out with some of those expenses? Absolutely. Yes. So, so I'll, I'll use Hamilton County as an, as our example, because that's the one I'm most familiar with, but yes, um, the animal will go through the sale. It'll get a bid, whatever it's bid to, let's say it's a thousand dollars. And then the community has the option to do add-ons to that animal or to that kid really. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, you know, I hate, I hate that it can be somewhat of a, uh, you know, who, you know, game, but, but, you know, that does happen. I mean, granddad may, may give you a $250 add-on where, this other kid may only get 50. So it's a, it's a bit of a popularity thing too. You know, who, who you are, who, you know, uh, we try to, you know, we try to, I think most people try to spread that out as evenly as they can. Uh, but yeah, it's, we're very fortunate to, to be able to do that. There's a lot of counties within the nation 
that that don't have a premium sell uh the animals only get market price and and it's 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 quite different in other states uh we're very very lucky in texas to have the opportunities that we have well across the different fairs um i've definitely seen kids that take it upon themselves whether they're coached or not to do a little bit of salesmanship or even get the word out among their community say hey i'm so and so and i'm showing this animal just even that's a little bit of marketing skills that they're learning they tend to get a better price more bids they tend to get more add-ons than somebody who doesn't speak to anybody and just says i'm going to bring my animal and see what happens yeah absolutely and and that's that's something that uh you know we try to instill in our in our um and the kids that we help is to, Hey, go, go, so, not solicit, but go, go out into the crowd and, and talk to some of those, those businesses and talk to those guys that, that are, that are spending money, guys and girls that are spending money. And, and yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, um, you try to get them in a bidding war <laughs> in some, in some fashion and, and that helps you out. So helps the kids out. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned vision dairy services that you're working with. Uh, providing manure management for dairies. Uh, yeah. What, so a great business to be in. There's always going to be manure produced. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, what, you know, you grew up in the ag industry. What mm-hmm. made you go this direction? Was it contacts? Was it, you know, how, yeah. how did you end up here? Yeah. So I, I worked for a, uh, I worked for a dairy uh, company when I was in college, all through uh, college while I was at Tarleton. It was mm-hmm. called Bovine Supply Line. And so I learned a lot about the dairy industry through those four years of being in school, four, four and a half, actually. <laughs> four and a half, <laughs> if, if I'm being honest with everybody. Isn't that normal? What, wait, what? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Dad said you, you got four years to finish and I, I stretched it just a little longer. But um, so I was familiar with the industry. You know, when I was in college, there was about 200 and 25 dairies in, in central Texas. So that would have been Erath County, Hamilton County, and Comanche County. And, uh, you know, though those numbers have, have dwindled. Dwindled uh, immensely. We're down to about 65. Yeah. The dairies have gotten a quite a bit larger. And so, you know, just through the course of time, I started in that industry when I was in college, taught ag, you know, taught ag in Stephenville. So I was around it some while I was at, while I was an ag, uh, ag advisor at Stephenville high school and you know went you know went away from it for about 10 years and, and then had the opportunity to go back to the the dairy industry uh through different sales uh companies through different things and and just i don't know why but it just it's it's always it's always drawn me you know back to it i, I don't i can't say i don't know if there's a reason or I, th- I think some things just happen for a reason and I, I, I keep getting drawn back to it. And, and so, you know, vision dairy is, is a, is a company that, that, uh, Ray Morris, uh, the guy that I worked for started about three or four years ago. And, uh, I took over it right before COVID hit last year and, Great uh, timing, yes. right. And so I, I take, I took over the operations uh, at that point and, uh, it's a really cool system and, and we're, we're utilizing equipment to recycle water. Uh, we're using equipment to take the manure that the cow produces every day, recycle it and make a bedding out of it. It's called fiber bedding or green bedding. And it's a, awesome. it's a, it's a resource that, that a lot of guys are looking at, uh, you know, going to because of its, uh, you know, your ability to recycle the water use the water for different things, whether it be flushes, uh, which you, so a flush is where you clean the alleys of a dairy barn, mm-hmm. or they're mm-hmm. taking it out to the field uh, mm-hmm. and using it into their, you know, their irrigation pivots. So we're look, you know, we've got a lot of different projects that we're looking at right now. And most all of them are, how can we reuse our water and how can we reuse the manure that we're making to, as a secondary, you know, resource. And so it's a, it's a really cool process. Um, we use machines to, we use machines to press or spin, Mm -hmm. um, centrifugally water out of the manure. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool process. If, if you've not uh, had a chance to see that or not familiar with it, there's a lot of resources online 
I, obviously, you can get on our website, visiondayservices.com, and see some of that. YouTube videos. Uh, there's a lot of neat. There's a lot of things going on in the dairy industry that 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 is uh, eco friendly. I guess is a good word to say. Yeah. No matter what anybody says, farmers are the original recyclers. Yeah, they are, and and uh, they're very resourceful people. Uh, drink more milk. Drink more milk. That's mm-hmm. right. So, um, you know, you've, you've done a great job of, you know, telling us about yourself, telling us about your background, um, your history and where your career in agriculture has taken you, uh, what you're doing is fantastic for, uh, dairies and for the kids. Um, you're, you're everywhere. And that is really awesome that you're able to give back in that way. Uh, the, you have such a tradition of agriculture instilled in you. Um, how do you see this playing out? You've got young kids coming mm-hmm. up. So you've got three children. Uh, do you see this being passed on? Yes, I, I do. I, you know, one of the things that I, I told my wife, Gail, early on, even when we were dating, I said, you know, when, if we ever have kids, I'll never force them to, to do the mm-hmm. animals like in the show industry, mm-hmm. you know, we'll never force them to do that. I, I've always felt like you make somebody do something that, that, that maybe don't want to do. It's, you're never going to get a, a strong outcome. So, you know, I, I, I do think the boys and, and, uh, now, now that we have the little girl, Stevie, I do think at some point they'll probably come to dad and say, Hey, we want to show a pig or, Hey, we want to go pull a calf out of the pasture with uncle Brant and let's, let's do this. And, you know, Jackson, Jackson has been a big influence. He's my nephew and he's been a big influence on the kids. And we go to the barn and he get, you know, the boys get to see him work the animals and, and how he operates. And, and so we took Fisher, we took Fisher to San Angelo in December and he awesome. showed for the first time, did a nice job. Oh, exciting. Got, got to do showmanship as nice. a peewee showman. Um, didn't win, but, but the judge said, you know, you're probably second. Now, that's a, that's oh, a nice, yeah. I'm sure he told all the little kids the same thing, but <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think at some point they'll come to me and say, yeah, we want to do this. And at that point we'll pick up and, and here we go. So they've got the best teacher there ready, yeah. ready to go. Oh, yeah. I want to know what at all the livestock shows and all of your fair experiences, what is one or two of your favorite that you'd like to share? Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's, let's see. I'll tell you that um, probably the, the most exciting, uh, one of the neatest, uh, the neatest things that we got to do as a family uh, was in 2018 my nephew Jackson uh won the won the World Pork Expo. He won the Crossbred Guilt Show at the World Pork Expo. Oh wow. my goodness. Yeah, and it was huge. I mean we had about 40 people up there with us. We were in Des Moines, Iowa. Um we had a huge cheering section and, and uh it it was just a really neat experience. He got to you know he got to be in the limelight and and so to kind of give you a background there, Jackson is always, um, you know, for the longest time, Jackson kind of got what was ever left at mm-hmm. the barn. <laughs> so we would, <laughs> we would, okay, you're going to, you know, everybody's come through and pig now you get to go. And, and so for him to be able to get that, that big of a win, be in that spotlight, you know, they were using his pig and his picture in different magazine ads. And oh my goodness. It was a really neat wow. thing for him. And, and I got to share that with my show family, got to share that with my brother and, and Jackson, um, you know, while we were in Des Moines and we, I will not lie. We had a very large celebration afterwards. That's awesome. Late into the night, late, <laughs> very late into the night. And we had, it, we made it, we made it worthwhile. That was the second time I'd won the the Wall Pork Expo Crossbred Guilt Show. I had won it, and so the, so this leads to my second, probably my second favorite uh, experience. Uh, in 2011, a young lady um, bought a show guilt from me. Her name was yes. Sarah Jones. Her, her family showed with me for a long time. She's graduated, and she's at she's already having kids of her own now. Um, that that's been that's how long it's been. Um, and, and she showed a guilt at the World Pork Expo. 
and she was champion guilt, champion crossbred guilt. And that guilt set a world record that day at, at the sale. She sold for $27,000. Oh, wow. And that is how I bought Gail's engagement ring. That's how I put oh. a guy in the house. <laughs> uh, so, so that that was a really neat experience to uh, to be a part of, you know, with that that family as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Really neat amazing. deal. That's cool. Really That's neat cool. deal. Not not to mention, where did you meet Gail? You know, um, I'll 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 tell you. I met her at the Ag Teachers Convention in 2010. Go. <laughs> there you go. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. There but, you go. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to tell the rest of that story to Jeffrey offline. Offline, <laughs> offline. Stop recording. No. Stop recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. No. There's a lot of people listening who um, are are wishing, man, I wish I had somebody like this where I live, but I don't know where to go. My ag teacher, FFA, they don't know where to go. Um, do you ever do, or do you know people that do it maybe over the phone or over a uh, you know, video call just to get advice? And, yeah. and what would you recommend? How do people get in contact with you or, or any others that you know? Yeah, of? we do almost, I mean, with, unless you're within a 60 mile radius of Hamilton, Texas, at most everything we do is on a video or on a snap, on a, on a, there's so many um, different ways. Zoom, now. Oh, a FaceTime, yes. Do it, right? <laughs> yep, yep. We do a lot of stuff over the phone. Hey, send a video. Let us look at it. Uh, we'll make some adapt, uh, you know, adjustments based on what we see. And of course, if we can see those same animals at a jackpot show, maybe throughout the mm-hmm. year, we can make adjustments as as well. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different um, groups that that do what we do. Um, I suggest that you find one of them in your area. There's, there's plenty, there's one in every, there's one, there's one close, I promise. Um, and if, and if you don't know those people, uh, you know, look us up on, on Facebook, uh, Edwards family genetics, um, and we can direct you to that person or we can try to be that person if it's, if it's, uh, the right fit. So I've, you know, I've, I've got little kids now, so I'm, I am taking a step back on some level. Uh, on the show pigs, uh, where I've got some core families that I've helped for a long time and I'll continue to do that. Um, I may not take on as many new families as I used to because I just don't have time to, to do that. And, and so, yeah, but we'd definitely be, be glad to put you in contact with somebody in those areas that, that, that can help. And there's a lot of really good people in this industry uh, there's a lot of really not good ones in the industry, uh, but but we'll try to get you with one that that has a great reputation. So, love that, cool. love that. Yeah. Thanks, Blake. Yeah. Thanks for always being willing to help. Uh, yeah. Thanks for jumping at the opportunity to talk about agriculture, how it's impacted you, and how you're impacting impacting others. So, yeah, glad to glad to help, and and hopefully this uh, you know if we can if we just touch one person through this podcast. I mean, mission accomplished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mission accomplished. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for, thanks so much for, for coming on the show with us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Glad to help. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the County Fair Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share with a friend, and tell us what you'd like to hear on the show by going to www.countyfairpodcast.com. And to you and yours, may God bless you.